Now, a few years ago in Bangkok, um, IUCN adopted a very important resolution on food sovereignty and biodiversity. Um, and at this point in time, I'd like to invite Tagi Fava to remind us of what are the main elements of this important resolution. And after that, I'd like to describe very, very briefly um, the main elements of the food sovereignty paradigm, and we'll invite other speakers to join us. Tagi, do you want to come up? Thank you. Well, uh, the resolution which is called 3.017, namely resolution number 17 of the Third World Conservation Congress in Bangkok, uh, is a very well worked out resolution which uh, has a very good preamble, brings forth all of the uh, background, the argument about uh, the why there should be a uh, concern about food sovereignty and notes that there are something like 800 million people in hunger, starving people in the world and uh, something like 80% of those living in rural areas lack adequate access to basic productive resources such as land according to UN data uh, reminding of all of the right things, aware of all of the good things. I want to just get rushed because there's not much time into the operative uh, paragraphs. Uh, it's a very rights-based approach, by the way. Um, perhaps I should just say that it notes that food sovereignty is rooted in the right of peoples and countries to define their own agricultural and food policies, not only countries, but peoples. Uh, let me just parenthetically remind us all that IUCN resolutions are IUCN policy. That is how policy is determined. The only body in IUCN that can decide policy is the members meeting in uh, assemblies, such as in this Congress. And uh, no one else, not even the Council, or especially not the Secretariat, cannot set IUCN policy. So it uh, notes that and, prior and that food sovereignty <coughs> prioritizes access of small-scale producers communities to productive resources, commits to respect, conserve, restore, and protect <coughs> all natural resources, including protection against in endangering technologies such as use of genetically modified organisms, GMOs, which IUCN policy is a moratorium on GMOs, and promotes equitable and ecologically sustainable community-based agricultural practices and that food sovereignty is not opposed to trade, but advocates for a system of international agricultural trade that prioritizes local production for local markets before export and supports agricultural research led by small-scale food producers. These are all important. And then, finally, the World Conservation Congress at its third session in Bangkok, Thailand, uh, in November of 2004, does the following. One, two, three, it has three decisions. Number one is that it urges all IUCN members, commissions, and the IUCN Director General to give due consideration to policies in support of food sovereignty as they relate to achieving the mission and vision of IUCN and to their application in all stages of biodiversity, conservation, natural resource management, and poverty eradication. And I remind that this reminds it earlier that IUCN's uh, uh, vision is a just world that conserves and values nature. Uh, number two, it requests the IUCN Director General to take an active role in working with states and relevant international organizations and processes to advocate for a food sovereignty approach and uh, also to develop an interprogrammatic initiative on biodiversity and an end to hunger to enhance understanding of the relationship between hunger eradication and biodiversity conservation including agricultural biodiversity and cultural diversity with the participation of IUCN commissions and interested IUCN members. And number three, the third decision, calls upon the Commission on Environmental, Economic and Social Policy within the framework of its mandate and the IUCN Secretariat working with interested IUCN members and relevant partners 
to spearhead initiatives on food sovereignty by the following. Enhancing and articulating the understanding of the relationship between food sovereignty and the IUCN vision and identifying key areas of relevant work. B. Enhancing understanding of the impacts of social and economic policies such as commodity dumping, privatization of natural heritage, and economic sanctions, including blockades on both poverty and the conservation of biological resources, including agricultural biodiversity. And C, enhancing understanding of conditions, methods, and tools by which biodiversity conservation and an end to hunger can be pursued and achieved in a synergistic fashion, as envisioned under the concept of food sovereignty. D, promoting and supporting the development of effective policies and practices on the basis of the above understandings, and developing the relevant capacities of IUCN component programs, members, and partners. And uh, this is the end of it. Uh, it's very interesting that there, there, that there is a footnote, a very significant footnote from Mr. Bush. Uh, the Department of State, United States, provides the following statement for the record. Since it's part of the resolution, I'm obliged to read it happily. State and agency members of the United States refrained from engaging in deliberations on this motion and took no national government position on the motion as adopted for reasons given in the U.S. General Statement on the IUCN resolution process. Uh, and the Nature Conserv uh, Conservancy Council of New South Wales in Australia provided the following statement for the record. We are concerned that this resolution equals a major shift in the focus of IUCN policy away from biodiversity conservation and towards dealing with socio-economic issues, a big sin of course, that is deserving of attention, that will weaken IUCN's capacity. The alternative approach could be to form partnerships with social issue-based organizations, thereby completely denying the first phrase, not the second phrase, in IUCN's vision, which is a just world that does whatever. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony. By the way, what has been adopted is IUCN policy. Don't let anybody tell you anything else. Okay, thank you very much, Taggy.